Hi, I'm audiologist Ann Mundell Noel. When it comes to your hearing needs, your personal care have always been our top priority. Whether it's for a hearing test, a repair, or new technology, providing the highest level of hearing care is our goal. Many of you have called us amazing, and we agree. We're now calling ourselves Amazing Hearing. Same great people, same great location, just a new name. Amazing Hearing in the Trader Joe Shopping Center. And welcome back with me today from Amazing Hearing is a guest who uh, often does work with our Hearing Well Club. And I'd like to welcome Ann Mundell Knoll. And Ann, do you, um, I don't, I, I know you do things with our, with uh, Hearing Well with Tony, right? I do. I'm very privileged to be the audiology advisor for the Hearing Well Club. Yeah. So Tony and I have met several years ago, actually through our children. Her grandson and my son played water polo together is how we made our initial contact, okay. recontact. Oh, very good. Yeah. So how long have you been in this field, been an audiologist? Well, I've been an audiologist since 1983. Mm -hmm. um, I got my undergraduate and master's degree from Michigan State University. And um, getting into the field, I thought I wanted to be a physical therapist. So okay. I was going to go to the University of Michigan, where I'm from. And um, at the last minute, I got a track scholarship to go to Michigan State. So I decided, hey, I'm going to be a Spartan. And when I got there, they didn't have a physical therapy program. Okay. So I had oh, to decide. How strange. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have sports medicine, but they yeah. didn't have physical therapy. Interesting. So my roommate at the time was an audiologist. She was, well, not an audiologist. She was in the program. And um, so it was kind of the path of least resistance. I liked it. It came easy. And then I'm like, mom, dad, guess what? I need a master's degree before I can do something mm -hmm. with this. And they said, you want to be a what? So the undergraduate degree is speech pathology and audiology. So everybody's heard okay. of speech pathologists, sure. but not that many people have heard of audiologists. Right. So at the master's level, you choose one or the other, and I chose audiology, and here I am today. Very good. Yeah. Now, you're the owner of Amazing Hearing, which is over uh, by the Trader Joe's. I always forget the name of that shopping center. Oak Brook. Oak Brook, okay. Mm -hmm. Oak right. Brook Village, yeah. And uh, how long have you been over there? So I have been in that center since 2013. Okay. So we moved from across the parking lot, those where the new condos are, and we are now right down the line from Trader Joe's. So okay. the new Trader Joe's, right? The new the, Trader the Joe's. New and expanded I don't think I've Trader been Joe's. to there since they've expanded that. It is beautiful. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's a very nice center. But um, I used to be a, a Ultimate Hearing. And just of September 1st, we changed our name to Amazing Hearing. Okay. So we... Is that an affiliation or just a... No, we had a, um, actually a cease and desist on the name from a oh, company okay. in the Midwest <laughs> um, because they own the service mark for ultimate hearing, those words. Oh, and so everyone okay. nationwide who was using those words had to stop using them. And so we had to come up with I a new it. name. And our patients are always telling us that we're so amazing. So we looked at it and it was available. And <laughs> okay. we're so excited to have the new name. Very good. It moves us up in the, in yeah. the phone book ranking too, That's right? That's true. It <laughs> does. Do people use phone books? I don't know. <laughs> in Laguna Woods maybe they the, do. Maybe in Google search. True, and yes. <laughs> in, in Laguna Woods, they still use the, the phone book. All right, so um, uh, uh, what's the misconception, you, you know, about hearing loss? And, uh, you know, I, I, I can recall not long ago, maybe about two, three, four years ago, and uh, my older daughter brought home an app um, mm. with frequencies, and how even at age 20, there's certain frequencies you still, you can't hear anymore. Because she, when she did this, she's like 26 now, so she was probably about 22. Mm -hmm. And my younger daughter, who was probably eight at the time, could hear everything. Mm. And then the next level up, even my older daughter couldn't hear that. Of course, all of us and my, my in-laws, you know, she went up the scale. Right, so there's right. a natural frequency loss or natural progression, right? Mm -hmm. There is. So the misconception with hearing and hearing aids is that... Um, especially for hearing aids, that you can just put it in your ear, walk out the door, and you're good. Mm -hmm. And nothing is further from the truth. One of the things that people need to understand is that it's the brain that does the hearing, not 
the ears. So the ears are only transmitting the sound to the brain. Okay. So what we try to initially state with our patients is that the brain cannot remember what it doesn't hear. Okay. okay. So it seems like a aha, right, duh. But the thing about it is if you are trying to understand a message, and the brain is getting only a portion of that message. Right. Then, and I think we have a slide on this. On uh, brain, okay, yeah, brain I think here. that we do. Now, I have a, here's my question on that, that you said that I find interesting. Are you saying that, and I might be confused here, that your hearing loss isn't happening in your ear, it's happening in the brain, or, or am I wrong? Or is it happening in your ear? And because of that, it's not, of course, transmitting to the brain. I, Correct. I'm a little the, confused. The second one is, is accurate. Okay, so, so what happens okay, is, is if, you, if you took your hand, and this would be a speech signal coming across, and these are the little hair cells yeah, in your ear okay. across all those frequencies that you were just talking about with your daughter, right? They're all there. Your eight-year-old can hear it. It hears the message. Boom. The brain gets a full spectrum of sound. Okay. Now, as you start to get older, those hair cells start to die and don't get as much blood circulation, and so they die over time, and that's when hearing loss starts to occur, right? So all the little hair cells are not firing as much as they should. So when the sound comes across, all the hair cells are not getting the stimulation, so the brain isn't getting a full spectrum okay. of sound. All right, and that's that why sense? men can't hear their wives because they have higher frequencies. Right, that's called spousal <laughs> deafness. I think it comes when you say, I do, but um, yeah, that's exactly it. So what I wanna get back to- That's interesting though, that you, you know, the way, you know, we were talking about our frequencies, so that, it, it, it begins to happen at, a fairly young age, you start to learn, lose a little bit of that, right? It does. So what happens is the ear really is, the brain with hearing is mm -hmm. really amazing. We can hear from 20 hertz all the way out to 20,000 hertz. Okay. We really have no computers that can do everything that the brain can mm -hmm. do when it comes to hearing. And that's why one of the things of making hearing aids expensive is the research and development. Okay. Because it's not a general amplifier. If you think about it, when I'm in a restaurant, if I wore a hearing aid, if I am the waitress, I want to hear speech, but I don't want to necessarily hear background noise. Yeah. But if the, yeah. co the cook says, hey, your order's up, now I do want to be able to hear from a distance. So the things that we're yeah. asking the brain to do um, is just amazing. Right, right. And it's something that when people have good hearing, you can, you know, you mentioned, you know, spousal hearing, but selective hearing. But we're able to um, isolate something. Mm -hmm. we, you know, when we, you can be watching TV at home, and yet you might hear the fact that um, you know some little alarm goes off even mm -hmm. if it's very faint you know your your dishwasher dings that it's ready to that it's done with its cycle or something right and you can hear that you're not listening for it but you'll pick that up right so that's yeah. one of the things that when you have hearing loss that ability to filter the sound becomes diminished. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So especially as we start to get a little bit older, we don't process as fast, mm -hmm. and so that process gets further diminished. So when you get a hearing aid, my job as an audiologist is to actually kind of be that physical therapist for your ears. Okay. So what I am doing is I am making you aware of sound. So when you put the hearing aid on, the brain now has some awareness mm -hmm. of sound. And then I am going to get your brain to accept the sound, to recognize, oh, that is the dishwasher, that's the refrigerator, oh, that is just my neighbor mm -hmm. outside closing the mailbox. Whatever those sounds are, then you can go in and um, have the brain understand okay. what that sound is, and then we give application or meaning to those sounds. And for many, many people, this is maybe not anything uh, catastrophic hearing loss, yes, it, it certainly happens, but it's just a natural progression of mm -hmm. aging like, like everything else, like your eyes or whatever it may be that sooner or later most of us may have to wear glasses or have cataracts or whatever it might be. Right, so one of the things that we do different at Amazing Hearing is that we are very service oriented. So what we do is we will measure sound, we will, we will do um, a lot more verification to make sure that you're being properly mm -hmm. fit with hearing aids. Okay, now um, when it comes to that, you know, there are some people who are very self-conscious about that. Mm. 
Um, probably less so today, only because over the last 15 years, we get so used to people of all ages having something in their ear, earbuds right. or mm -hmm. whatever it might be. Right, the stigma is the going stigma away. The stigma is really going away, mm -hmm. even to the fact that uh, I've seen some hearing ages that are now bright colors. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. You're not hiding anything. It, you know, it doesn't have the stigma. Uh, but for some people, it's they want something that's comfortable as well, that they don't feel like, oh, there's a little something in my ear. And uh, does that take a little getting used to? So the amount of discomfort is minimal. I mean, mm -hmm. people now have to kind of feel their ears to go, oh, my, my hearing aid's still <laughs> on because I feel like I've lost them because they're so comfortable. But the wonderful thing about hearing aids is, yes, cosmetically, they are not... Um, an issue any longer. Okay. And the second thing is that because the technology is so good, people are wanting to connect them to, the, and they can control them from their iPhones, mm -hmm. they want to get the technology. So we are seeing a younger and younger population doing something about their hearing because they're not grandma's hearing aids anymore. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I had a gentleman who owns an ad agency in Newport Beach, and we, he's like, I just can't hear the millennials. They just talk and it sounds like one solid stream <laughs> of sound. He's like, I just need to do something. And he had a very mild hearing loss. We gave them the hearing aids. We even went to the point of um, coloring the little wire that comes in so that it totally blended in with his skin. Mm -hmm. And um, he came back the next week and said, I'm not even sure why we did that. He's like, because I'm taking them out and I'm actually showing people what I have yeah. because I am doing so well with my technology. And you mentioned um, the technology of pairing with uh, your, your smartphone and mm. all and how you can do settings, but you can also, if I'm not mistaken, you know, you can maybe set it once or have you, the audiologist, help with that. And, uh, you know, one of the advantages, as you said, different situations. You're in a restaurant is different than being at home watching TV or, or whatever it might be. Right, and the technology today with the iPhone is amazing. You can change the programs, you can change the volume, you can change the microphone directionality, mm -hmm. but it's very simple. So the hearing aids are doing it themselves or you can control it yourself with the phone. And it can be both a smartphone or a smartphone. So it can either be an Android or an iPhone. Yeah. It doesn't have to be right. just an iPhone. But the advantage is with the iPhone, you can take the phone call directly into your ears and block out the outside sound. So yeah. you can do better than a normal listener, right? Wow. When I'm in a noisy restaurant, I've got one ear with the phone yeah, and yeah. one ear in my, uh, one finger in my ear. And with the iPhone, you can take the phone call into both ears and I can mute the microphone and turn off the outside sound. So patients who actually thought maybe they needed a cochlear implant or were frustrated because they can't hear on the phone are now doing amazing with cell phone technology. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. So again, you're located over by uh, Trader Joe's. What are your hours over there? So we are open Monday through Friday, nine to five, Saturdays and weekends by appointment only. Okay, very good. And it's great to have you on. I know you're gonna be back in a couple, three weeks or something mm -hmm. like that. So we'll, we'll look forward to that. And of course, Ann helps out uh, with the Hearing Well Club, right? Yes, I'm the audiology advisor there. I'm very privileged to have that um, position. And I look forward to just helping people improve their quality of life through their hearing. All right, good to, good to have you on. Thanks, Kevin. Take care, we'll be Take back. Take care. We'll be right back.